Hello guys, welcome to Korea. This is our first of many vlogs and we're here at Lotte, Lotte World, World in Seoul. Yeah, we have a rip off Disney castle <laughs> right in front of us. Yeah. We're gonna go to this thing. Ethan's very excited for it. Yeah, uh, Atlantis Adventure. He's kind of, he's actually too tall to ride it, but uh... I cut off the sh soles of one of my shoes and we're gonna get on that way. Yeah. I'm actually fine to ride without shoes, ish. We'll see, ish. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We're walking up to the ride right now, so we'll see if he gets the nine entrance. The wait time is 60 minutes. That's not too bad. We have Express, so we'll ride it again later. And the park just opened, but we were kind of like hella late, so... We, are, we rope dropped this into 60 minutes, which is pretty crazy. Negative 2G airtime moments somewhere on this thing. I'm guessing it's this. It's this? You, you, think, it's, you think it's that thing? This thing's pretty sick, like look at this. Oh. Yo, the, the height checker just walked by. And we might be okay, but we have to make it to the station first. She didn't say anything. We'll see. Look at this beauty. Darren, show your shoes off. His solo oh, yeah. shoes. Guys. Don't worry, don't think of that. That's the bad news. That's a poorly cut one. All this, this is slightly better. All this for a credit. How do you how does it make you feel? They're an old pair of shoes, so I don't care. It is so hot in Korea, like think about like sticky Florida weather, that's exactly it. Except it's slightly worse. Yeah. There's a bunch of misters in this queue line, so it's nice. Much needed. But it's really hot. While we're waiting in the line, let's uh Admire Lotte Tower. It's a massive building. 1600 feet. How, how, how big is it, Darren? 1600 feet. The sixth tallest building in the world. Yep, that's pretty cool. I don't think we'll go up there, but that is really high up there. Also, while we're waiting in line because we're bored, do you guys recognize this? <laughs> guys, we made it past checkpoint two. Look at him over there. He must be so happy. Whoa. Darren, how does it feel making it past checkpoint number two? We just need to make sure there's nothing in the station. Yeah, that, that could be bad. It's so hot. Oh, boo hoo. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. They load two boats at once here, which is nice to see. And they have well, a nice locker system on the right. And the station is cool, so that's good, but. The operations are miserable. This is the strangest thing I've ever seen. The operators come around with a cart. Also, the head operator has a microphone that she wears and talks to everyone. It's just weird to see how they do operations differently in different countries. It's pretty cool. You know, while we're enjoying the line, here's a nice lake. And the buildings of Seoul. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and there's children fighting. But lake and Seoul, much better. Really good view. This is a cool ass station building. Look at this. Yeah, this is so cool. Also, what in the laundry room? Oh, there's fans. Interesting. So, Atlantis Adventure. Very, very interesting coaster. I don't like the LSM launch at the beginning is like the second strongest, right there? Yeah, second strongest of any LSM launch, I think. Unless there's some random girl flower that I don't know of. But it doesn't have a kick in it. It's very gradual, but it accelerates a lot. But the launch didn't really throw me off. What threw me off is like the immediate like vertical angle you take up after the launch. You just go straight up into the mountain. It's yeah, like Yeah, it's crazy. It's like an intimate top hat, but even more extreme. The profiling is like really, really like sharp turns and there's some good positive G's like that low to ground water turn. I don't know if the negative 2G airtime moment is negative 2G's, but there's a lot yeah, of airtime thrown so. in. There's like good a good three moments. And the theming is like top notch. Like even like look at this. Room that we're in. Oh my, this is incredible. I don't know if this is a top 10 coaster, like I've heard some people call it is, but it's a, definitely a solid coaster in of itself. It, it's a very like diverse coaster. It has everything. I agree. Also, I got on it. I'm so happy. <laughs> no. We're gonna go on the inside section of the park now, because um, there's not a lot of good stuff over here besides Atlantis Adventure. But that was kind of a, we waited about an hour for that, and the line's not long. It's just the operations are so slow, and they run four trains. And they see eight people, so it's not very good hourly capacity. But you know, we have Express. We're gonna do a bunch of rides on the inside. We'll show you what that looks like. It's a lot more of a mall part on the inside. But yeah, we're gonna head over there. We will definitely come back to ride this again because this is really good. Hopefully, we won't have to wait three hours for it. But yeah, it feels so much nicer inside. Holy! Here is what the inside looks like. Well, you could rent school uniforms if you want to. If you're into that, you know.
Here's your other half of the park. PUBG! Why do they have PUBG Battlegrounds? I don't know. Yeah, a huge mall park. This And this theming up here is sick. Like, look at this. Here's the iconic moment where it goes through the bridge. Oh, my finger's in the way. Here's the iconic moment where it goes through the bridge. This is sick. Yes, sir, French Revolution. Okay, we just did French Revolution. When I like walk to the station, there's like so much padding on the seat. And I thought I was in for like, I got tortured for like, I thought I was in for like something that I didn't want to do. But it wasn't that bad at all. The track was really smooth. There's a two or three transitions that were pretty jarring. But besides that, the track was very smooth. Force-wise, it does a lot of meandering, but it's kind of cool when you're going through buildings and stuff. But the meandering might be because we were in, like, towards the front of the train. Maybe if we had a back row, which we're probably going to get later, because it was surprisingly good. Yeah, and then, like, the only forceful moments were the loop and the last helix. Those are, like, the only two forceful moments. The rest of it is a lot of meandering, but it's really cool because you're going through buildings. We'll definitely get back to this coaster. I don't know what we're going to next. I'll let you know when we figure it out. Okay, we're going to do Pharaoh's Furry because it's right here. Fury, why, why do I call it furry? <laughs> Anyways, this is like an Indiana Jones ripoff. We'll see how it is. Also, this park is a maze, but there's a lot of signs, so it helps a lot. Yo, look at this view, guys. I don't think we're supposed to be, uh... Anyways, uh... Look at that. This wonderful mall park. And here we are, Pharaoh's Fury. It doesn't look that busy today. 10 minute wait, so we're standbying this. And so far, this looks really cool. We'll see what else is in store for us. This is giving heavy Indiana Jones vibes, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, they have a movie. It's actually very well put together. This is like Disney, Disney level theming. Guys, this forgot to render in. And look at this. This is like our t-shirts. Yep. Uh, yes, sir. Caught the, caught the, the merch. Oh, we finally made it to the station. Well. That was the most hot and I think muggy way of the day. Look, there, here's a car coming. Indiana Jones ripoff with only two rows. Okay, so Pharaoh's pretty Fury. Fury. It was a pretty good ride. Um, super long. The theming was amazing. I don't know like, yeah. just because it was Disney, like, Especially, honestly. yeah, some of the scenes. We didn't record during the ride, but like, there was a massive <laughs> school that you go through. Out, there's POV, but yeah. It was really cool. Okay, so the, the Omni movement where it goes like that, like on, on like the Disney rides, Indiana Jones and Dinosaur, it's like, super aggressive and it like it gives you some thrill you know and this is like not not that you go pretty slow it's like very slow movement it tried to be thrilling but it just didn't hit that spot yeah. and i wish if they did what disney did with it and with their theming and with that layout it would be so good also they like i could tell they got inspiration from indiana jones in a lot of places and like the one of them was like the boulder scene, it wasn't actually a boulder. But there, there was, was some a, weird portal. Yeah, there was a really sizable drop after, like, it was pretty big. So, oh my gosh, no clearance for Darren. Yeah, I'm gonna hit my head in this cave. Also, the, the pacing at like a few points was a little weird. Like, you go outside and you kind of just meander for 20 seconds, then you get back into the action. That's a little strange. It's a super long ride, but I thought it was really cool. So, yeah, definitely a must do here, uh, honestly. We're gonna go do probably Comet Express and then go and get lunch, so we gotta find Comet Express first, I don't know where it is. Here's what this place looks like from ground level. There's a pretty cool centerpiece here, that's actually like really cool, but huge building, absolutely massive. So guys, we were like really struggling to find Comet Express, it's nowhere on these signs. I have a feeling it's this PUBG ride. We're gonna use our Express and just go see what it is, <laughs> and I'll let you know whether... I'm pretty sure this is Comet Express though. This is not Comet Express, but... Where we landed at, boys. We're in the battle bus. It's moving around. It's kind of cool. There's all the arms, the opposition. We're going to talk about the battle bus, too. Oh my gosh, we're going to get out guns and shoot. Papa G, I'm living the dream. POV. POV. Papa G. Papa G Mobile. POV, you're an American at going to public school. Now we get to go sit in these chairs. Simulator ride. Are you ready, Parker? There's a gun on this too. Yo guys, I got number two and I low-key just like run around and shot at random things without any strategy at all. We bought you along for that a little bit, but that was like the wild most interesting thing I've done in an amusement park probably. Yeah, yeah it's cool. It was, it was strange. 
Cruelty World has a lot of like simulator rides. We're gonna skip most of them. So that's just one of many, but it's PUBG, I guess, which is cool. And there's a walkthrough attraction. You first had this like you were in the battle bus or whatever. It's called, I don't know what it's called in PUBG. Do you know what it's called? No, I don't play. And then there's like shaking and moving around. It's like bobbing up and down and like. I don't know, it felt like a safety hazard a little bit to me. <laughs> and then after that, you got into a standing shooting room and then you got into a sitting simulator shooting room. This is an interesting walkthrough attraction. I'm glad that we did it though, it was, it was fun. So we're gonna go eat lunch now and then Common Express. I think we found where we need to go. The premium food court. Ready, everyone, let's share with the class what we got to eat. What did you get, Parker? Uh, fried rice cake. What did you get, Darren? I got the soba and pork katsu. Yep, and I got chicken. I don't know what the rest of it was. It's chicken, but it has french fries. We took a quick detour to the log flume on our way to Common Express. And we're going to take many more detours on our way to Common Express. But this log flume has a 70 minute wait that we're skipping right now. So yikes. You know what I find so interesting? The ride operator cleans the boat after every single person gets off. Like you're not going to get wet anyways. No, don't do that. I'm sitting in Darren's lap right now. It's kind of weird. We're ready to get wet. Guys, we have It's a Small World at Home, guys. This is what It's a Small World at Home looks like. Help me, I'm scared. No! I did not get wet at all. There's a second drop though. I love the coherent storyline. Now there's dinosaurs. It makes so much sense. So guys, what do we think of the log flume? I'd say it had a, more theme than I thought it would because I thought it would be a fair log flume. It has it nothing. It's basically an upscale fair log flume though. Yeah, it is. There's two drops. Dude, we literally almost tipped over, bro. The log was like, <laughs> and like completely near like 45 degree angle. There's a right operator that's just walking along watching us at a 45 degree angle. I didn't really get wet. I mean, to be fair, the weight, of, us did. the weight of our boat was like perfect. Like we put the lightest person in the front, heavy people in the back, so it's like, and like, you know. Yeah, so it just surfs over all the water. So I like got like two drops on me and that's it. So yeah, I don't know. It's a decent amount of food. I don't know if I'll wait 70 minutes for it. Well, now we're gonna do a Pirates of the Caribbean knockoff. It's actually right here. You can even tell You can tell it's a Pirates of the Caribbean knockoff, but let's see how good it is. It's called the, the Adventures of Sinbad, so. Here's our second stop on our way to uh, our side quest to find Common Express. Um, we're riding a Pirates of the Caribbean ripoff with a very wealthy and two line. The station looks pretty cool. Yes, sir, we got front row. Front row, baby. Oh, we're gonna get away. We're dropping. Good theming. That's what we like to see. Yo, that's kind of sick. Oh my finger, my bad. Oh my god, this might be cooler than Pirates of the Caribbean. We did it, guys. I don't know the storyline, but it's over. We did it. That was amazing. Like, it was incredible. It was pirates, like, like the same, I don't know, so what am I going with it? This is, it was just it had like the pirate. same level of theming as pirates, yeah. had like almost all the same crazy animatronics. There were some really amazing animatronics and scenes in there as like, well. Like the funniest part is like, it's so janky, like the boat. Like the first drop is like, boom, boom, and then goes straight down and oh, yeah. it's like such a steep drop. It's like, it's very weird. And it's weird too at the bottom, it's just like stopped. But where it's the water, it slows down so much. It just yeah, it touches it's, itself it's, into it's the water. But that is like a great dark ride. It was deep from top to bottom. I, one thing that was really funny is there's one man operating the whole station, like assigning rows, doing the gates, dispatching the boats. Like there's like one boat at a time coming to the station, but there's one man doing the whole thing. And that was a great ride, like actually on floor with pirates. Yeah. And like probably the best dark ride here. I don't know, we'll see. Probably the best dark ride outside of a Disney or Universal Park that we've been on at least. Yeah, probably. We'll see what else comes this trip, but I don't think there's a lot of dark rides this trip besides. Not really, besides Disney and Universal. Yeah, so that, that was huge. I love that. Yeah. That was really good. Well, also for our canon quest to find Comet Express, uh, I cheated and I looked it up on the map. It's on Magic Island, which is like the area outside of the park, or the area that's outside. 
So we're gonna head over there and try to get cooked by the sun again. It's so humid out, but Common Express, I've heard great things about it. Let's see if it's true or not. I am not looking forward to being back outside, but we're gonna get around a Common Express and Atlantis adventure, so everything's good in the hood, I guess. You know, when I was looking for Common Express, I thought it would be inside the mall because it's an indoor coaster, but this makes a lot of sense. It's built on their ground. I'm pretty sure this is what the ride looks like. Like, just like the destruction. Constant destruction. Back row, about to absolutely slay this coaster. Oh, it's coming in hot. Oh, this looks interesting. I really hope it's as good as I, I've heard it is. Yo, what the hell oh, was that? That was, that was, that was crazy. crazy. I'm pretty sure in, uh, well, oh, Weird Coaster 3, which is coming out soon. Um, I wrote that this might be one of the most surprising coaches of our trip. And that kind of delivered on that statement. That was crazy. From the second you hit the first launch to like, mm -hmm. you hit the brake run, it is just pure insanity. Mm -hmm. Like, the laterals are crazy. Um, we didn't spin that much pure balance, me and him. But this kid, yeah. he was riding he by was spinning so much. He was riding by himself and he was out of control spinning. It was the craziest thing ever. That was so funny to watch. Yeah. Especially at the ends. Like the end has a few straight sections with like short turns and you go so fast on that. There's no way that ride was meant to go that fast. And if it was, that's insane. Oh, that thing was insane from top to finish. I'm kind of sad we can't ride it again because or we could, but it's a long wait. We use Express to cut the line, but that was crazy. And it was themed from top to bottom. It was a little jankier theming than like some of the other stuff in the park, but it, it was much appreciated. That was crazy. Like, actually, I think it's better than French Revolution at this park. I still think the Intimate Aqua Tracks is slightly ahead of it, but... Uh, not by much. Yeah, not by much. That thing was crazy. That was at, like a great family coaster, like near perfect family coaster. We're gonna go ride Atlantis Adventure while we're here, because it's right here. And uh, we're gonna rewrite on that. And hopefully we'll be in the back row this time, because the first time we were in the front row. We just got three more rides on Atlantis Adventure. Yeah, we used Express for the first one, then we found that the Silver Rider line was like literally empty. We could laugh at more, but uh, yeah. I, I, I got a good change of this coaster and there's some other stuff. Like, three other things I want to check out before we leave and we don't have a lot of time. Yeah. So that's why I was pretty much like, you probably could have got one more ride, but this coaster is very good. It's not a leap, but I'd say it's just very good. My thoughts from the beginning of the day are pretty similar. It's definitely heated up a little bit. It feels better. The negative 2G or 10 moment almost feels like negative 2Gs. I still don't really think it is, but um, I'm pretty sure it comes after the initial top hat, like I went But beyond that, I just think it's a great all well rounded coaster and like. The two hour wait right now, we just rode it three times in a row. So. Yeah, pro tip if you're coming here, just do the single rider yeah, line. Because like there was one other guy in it. We got on in like two minutes because it's eight car train, also, so there's going to be. Well, they, they don't see all groups with all groups. You get two groups of three, they're not going to take up uh, six, like three rows. They're going to take up four rows, and there's going to be two single riders because they yeah. don't mix it like that, which is kind of weird. So the single rider lines just go through people, and also it's not even like there's no one in it. Just, you can just walk up the exit and you'll see like the footprints. Like, I don't think there's any sign in, but I can't read Korean, so yeah, definitely pro tip. I think we're gonna check out the gyro tower now because uh, I don't really care much about it because it's a standard drop tower, but like, you gotta do it for the memes. Like, you gotta say, like, when someone shows you that video, like, you know what video I'm talking about. You could be like, oh yeah, I rode that. And they're gonna be like, really? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, so we're gonna do it for the memes right now. Okay, we just did the haha -ha, silly funny goofy drop tower silly funny goofy. It was uh <laughs> it was pretty good. They kinda operate it like it's like stuck in the COVID generation. There's like uh Yeah, it has face shields on it. Yeah, on every seat. And also they go every other seat, like so you're putting you're putting an empty seat between every person, which I found that really weird. And the face shields kinda made me cause with COVID a little bit. I didn't love that, but Honestly, the drop tower itself is pretty good. Like this, the spinning gives you like nice views of it, of Jose Tower and like mm -hmm. the whole entire city behind. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Anyways, where are we going now? I want to go. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna check out the flying theater and then the shooting dark ride. Probably a rewrite on a new, a rewrite on French Revolution. I don't know what order. Well, we'll catch, we'll catch up with you. The phone's getting wet, but this feels so good. Yeah. Oh.
French Revolution is so much better in the back. Like the two main drops of this ride, the drop right before the loop and the drop right before the final helix, they're so much better in the back. Especially the first one. The first one gives yeah. insane ejector. It's a crazy ejector. Mm -hmm. It's modern and comfortable. Yeah. This is the RLO, oh my god. Mm -hmm. A little more jarring in the back, but it's a good trade-off for the yeah. sweet ejector yeah. That's the real negative 2G moment. It's not Atlantis Adventure, it's that. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Wait, where are we going now? In there to the Flying Peter, close to the Dark Ride. I don't know what they're called, but whichever one I'm flying first. This, this place is kind of a maze. Try to go down, not up, so definitely not this way. Yeah, so we're going to this way as well. Yeah, I there's like no way for the shooting dark ride, so I'm gonna beat all of them, assuming there's, they keep track of points. This looks like a very interesting ride. I'm excited. Not even close, not even close. Oh my god. Look at this. Not even close. Haha. I'm sick of this. I enjoyed that ride. It was a good ride, it was a good ride. The guns were. I would shoot something like 10 times and still wouldn't blow up, even if it's like a stationary target. I don't know it's a stationary it's... target. Okay, and shoot at the small ones. It takes multiple shots for me too. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. It took like multiple shots for me too. I don't even like that. It's, it, it's good. I don't know. I know that was a good ride. It's fun. The screens were like kind of like mid, but it was a good ride. So. That's what matters. Now we're at the flying here already, so... Yeah, um, they're right next to each other. So we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll go do this. Never mind, guys. That was the exit. Yo, there's just another cool part of the park that we didn't know existed. We're back in the back room. We're going down. Deep in the underground. Dude, this is my favorite theme section of the park so far. It's sick. I can't... What is the theme of this? Like, what is it? Yeah, steampunk. It looks sick. I'm so confused how this ride works because this is not what a flying theater looks like. Feel dizzy during the ride, please close your eyes. I have a lot to say about this ride. I don't really know why. Like, okay, first of all, Soren, I have yet to find a flying theater that comes close to matching it. It might be because of nostalgia and a mix of other factors, but I've yet to find a theater that comes close to matching it. I actually prefer this, like, this uh, ride, ride system of a flying theater. Like, the, the you saw the video, the chairs the platforms kind of rotate to, to layer the three so you can't see other people's feet and it's, you really only can see what uh, you're looking at. It's really interesting. Um, the up and down felt a little more thrilling, like you could do more jolty moves with it, if you know what I mean. But there wasn't a lot of side-to-side -side side movement. I have no idea why we're going to the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> Everyone is just following us. <laughs> Alright. Literally everyone followed us to the bathroom. Um, yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, oh, but there's not, there wasn't a lot of side to side movement, so you didn't get that. And it didn't get into you as well as I. Like, I don't think it even moved any at all side to side. No, it didn't. Which was interesting. The Flying Theater itself, like the film, it was like a lot of fantasy stuff. I didn't really get a storyline in Korean. But there are some cool visuals. Like the 3D renders are like look good, but the screen was a little blurry, so it was a little off from there, but I've yet to find a perfect screen. Flight of Passage comes close, but it's still. The screen is transparent, and on the left side, you could see like an emergency exit line through the screen. Yeah, I see. <laughs> that's so that, that was too. pretty goofy. Besides that, I thought it was a pretty good flying theater, not beating Soren, but it was interesting, and that's what matters. It, it entertained me. That, that's good enough. I don't really know what we're doing right now. We have another hour at this park. Well, I'm going to get water, and I think you also want water, so yes, let's I go get water, water guys. <laughs> We're gonna wrap up our day with the monorail, which is already like being pretty well. We'll get some great views of the park. Legit having a party. Oh, we can not party anymore because it's a launch, but. Is he gonna have a party? Papa G. So that's it from Lotte World. This park was surprisingly good. It actually really good. I, I loved my yeah, time. This park was great. It's basically Disneyland it's about the, like the theme land. It's the Disneyland of Korea, and there's also like the knockoff ridden rides like Phantom's Fury and uh, Adventures of Sin Sinbad. Sinbad? I think. Something like yeah, that. Most of them are rip offs of Disney rides, you can tell. But that, they feel legitimate, and like this is, this is like the Disneyland of Korea, I would say. The theme here is amazing. Like, from top to 
bottom. I just think that this is a great park. The operations, they're very meticulous about it, but they are really efficient. But they don't like, they don't like stacking trains, so it's like one boat comes in and another one leaves and then one boat comes in. So it's not like really on top of things. Like the rides are high capacity, but they operate them pretty well for like being really meticulous about it. But I don't think we're gonna find too much about more of our trip like Japan is really bad and <laughs> I don't know about the rest of the Korean parks so I assume they're just as bad as the rest of Japan I mean Especially this wasn't like good but it was, it was above average or about average I would say there's a lot of culture differences between theme parks that I'm not used to like the ride operators talking while well, like that was pretty cool and like how the ride operators uh, like communicate with each other on the platforms yeah and they're very meticulous about checking everything and I thought that was, that was really mm -hmm. interesting yeah they have a very rhythmic way of doing restraints like, especially for Atlantis Adventure, the operators would check seatbelts at the same time, they would check restraints at the same time. Oh. And yeah, but they would just like, all the ground safety, they would just like really make sure they like have the same routine every time. And they would like verbally say it to each other, which was interesting. Kind of dragging on, but this is a really good part. <laughs> Atlantis Adventure is really good. Not as amazing as I thought it would be. And Comet Express is exactly what I thought it would be. One of the best family tours I've written. Yeah. And French Revolution. French Revolution. French Revolution was surprisingly good in the back. It met my expectations. It probably exceeded the his a little bit. Yeah. The injector's legitimate on that coaster. But three very solid coasters here. And a great park. A great family park. There's a lot great of Great dark theming. rides too. Yeah, there's good dark rides. It's Disneyland of Korea. I don't know. That's all I have to say. We're going to Beyond Jubilee next. So we'll see you in the next vlog. I don't know when that's coming out. I don't even know when this one's coming out. So that's all for you guys. As always, make sure to like and subscribe, join the Discord, link in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.